8.2 simplify radical expression so in this section we're gonna use the product properties and quotient properties of radicals to simplify the value of the radicand that are not a perfect square number not a perfect cube number not a perfect full power numbers okay. so that's the main difference from the previous sessions and this session so you can only multiply two radicand together if the index are the same then you can multiply the radicands together similarly in the quotients only if the index of the numerator radicals and the index of the denominator radicals are the same then you can rewrite this expressions into under one radical symbol with a fraction as a radicand inside so to simplify the number the uh, the radicand the numbers of the uh, the num the value of the radicand is not a perfect square number or not a perfect cube number we need to use this product property so let's take a look at on example 1a for the first example i'm going to write it down uh, you know step by step and then i will show it to you which step we can skip and then do it mentally to write less and then finish the problem faster so for example one and i notice that 72 is not a perfect square number so to determine this radical expression is simplifiable or not i have to be able to break down the 7 20, 72 into two factor one of the factor must be a perfect square number so to make sure that we simplify completely so 72 the perfect square number that probably that it comes up to you right away may be something like this 9 times 8 because 9 is a perfect square number but however this is not going to help you to simplify completely okay now how do we check we can simplify completely or not after you think about a perfect square number whatever the leftover number you have to consider this is there any perfect square number involved in that number also so 8 I know that 8 has also a perfect square factor which is 4 times 2 so 4 is also a perfect square number now to completely simplify this 72 the perfect square number that I need to use is not 9 it's not 4 multiplying these two together which is 36 see that a perfect square time and not a perfect square number that will give you a larger perfect square number so that way we will be done with simplifying in one step instead of writing over and over again so now i'm going to rewrite this 72 as square root of 36 times 2. using the property okay, see the property is like vice versa you can go left to right and right to left so using the property now I can rewrite this radical symbol as this radical expression as this square root of 36 times with square root of 2 and this gives us square root of 36 is 6 
times square root of 2. So every number that come numbers of variable that come out from the radical those are factors that's what you need to remember right 6 times square root of 2 is 6 square root of 2 so this is writing step by step and starting from the next example I will be skipping this step and we will mentally use do this step and then finish uh, get over with that okay. so that way we can complete the problem faster so now next example cube root of 81 81 is not a perfect cube number so we're gonna think about a perfect cube number times what give me 81 so you can basically go one by one. One to the third power is one. So you divide it one uh, 81 by one it's not going to help us anything. Okay? So one is not a good number to use. The next will be two to the third power. So two to the third power is eight. And 81 divided by eight. So 8 does not go into 81 evenly, so therefore, this is not a, a good factor. Next will be 2 to the, uh, 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power is 27. And then when we divide 81 by 27, it does go into evenly 3 times. So we now we see that 27 is a perfect cube number and also is a factor of 81. So therefore, I can rewrite 81 as 27 times 3. So using this idea, we're going to think about each factor. Cube root of 27 that is basically 3 and cube root of 3, 3 is not a perfect cube number so I cannot simplify so that left with inside the radical symbol so now this will become our final answer so let's move on to the next example fourth root of 64 so similarly you can start you know using this process that we are mentioned earlier one by one right so one to the fourth power is one that's a perfect full power number but however 64 times one that's not going to help us to go any further so we're not going to use one as a perfect full power. So the next one will be two to the fourth power. Two to the fourth power is 16. And when we divide 64 by 16, 16 goes into six, uh, 64 four times evenly. So therefore, 16 is a perfect square number and also a factor of 64. So we can use this factor to rewrite 64 as 16 times 4. Now using the product property, 6 full root of 16, that gives me two coming outside and four is not a perfect full power so I cannot continue simplifying it therefore it will left inside the radical so this will be my final answer two times full through the full power so now let's take a look at on the variable part 
since the example already tells you assume all the variable as a positive number so I don't really have to worry about putting absolute value at the end using the property from the last section we just need to simplify this so that means we're gonna do the shortcut the exponent of the variable divided by the index so 4 goes into 6 one time but however this time we have left over the remainder the quotient tells you what is the exponent of the variable outside the radical and the remainder tells you what is the exponent of the exponent of the variable inside the radical so this tells me outside the radical it will be y to the first power inside the radical because of we have a remainder so that will be full root of y the remainder tells you what is the exponent of it going to be y to the second power Okay. Now, this is using the shortcut that we talked about from the previous session, but the previous session, our remainder is always zero, so that's why you didn't really see this kind of situations, okay? because always it's coming up. But let's try to take a look at this by a long way, and then it'll help you to see better. Okay? So fourth root. I can break it down y to the 6th power as y to the 4th power times with y to the 2nd power. Because when you multiply, you add the exponent. So using the product property, I can say that 4th root of y to the 4th power times with 4th root of y to the 2nd power. So this gives me fourth root of fourth power is y and then times with full root of y square notice that we got the same answer so what I want you to do is use the shortcut so that you can we can finish it faster okay so let's try a next example six root of q to the 13 power so to simplify the variable the exponent of the variable divided by the index. So 6 goes into 13 twice and the remainder is 1. The quotient tells you what is the exponent of the variable outside the radical. The remainder tells you what is the exponent of the uh, variable inside the radical okay inside the radical so when i simplify this this will become q to the second power outside the radical and inside the radical i will left with q to the the remainder which is first power and this will be my final answer for this problem so hopefully, uh, you know, you are okay with this shortcut, and this shortcut will make more sense after we talk about rational exponent. Now, let's take a look at on the problem that has mixed up with the variables and the number as well, right? So we want to look at the cube root of 128 m to the 11 power so make sure you write it down this uh, follow the step closely okay simplifying we will not write more than three steps 128 that is not a perfect cube number so we need to find out what is the perf uh, is there a perfect cube number factor in 128 
2 to the third power is eight. 128 divided by 8, that is 16. So now we know that 128 is basically 8 times 16. So now I have to double check like I showed you before. We know that 8 is a perfect cube number. What about 16? Can 16 break it down further into factor of a perfect cube number and another number? So 16, can we break it down as another perfect cube number, which, which is 8 times 2? So to finish simplifying this problem faster, we know that the perfect cube number that we need to use is 8 times 8, which is 64. So 64 is a larger perfect cube number. Because 128 is 64 times 2. So now this will become, when we rewrite it, Q root of 64 times 2 times m to the 11 power. Now, using the product rule to think about each factor. Cube root of 64, that is 4. Because 4 to the third power is 64. So 4 comes up. And right away, we want to write it down what is left inside the radical. So notice that this 2, you cannot simplify it, so that will be cube root of 2. We are done with the variable part. Now we're going to, uh, I mean, we are done with the number part. Now we're going to be looking at the variable. So the variable is easy, right? All you have to do is what? The exponent of the variable divided by the index. So in this case, the exponent of the variable is 11 and divided by index 3. So 3 goes into 11 3 times, that is 9, and which gives us the remainder 2. So the quotient tells you what is the exponent of the variable outside the radical, and the remainder tells you what is the exponent of the variable inside the radical. So now I know that outside it will be m to the third power, inside of the radical will be m to the second power, and that will be my final answer. And I explain it to you in this example, step by step, what is happening, right? We break it down, and then we try to simplify it. So, now let's move these example faster so that we can finish up the rest of it. So, 162, and we are talking about a perfect fourth power. So, 162, and we know that 1 to the fourth power is 1. It's not going to do any good. So, 2 to the fourth power, that is 16. Okay. 2 to the fourth power, that is 16. Now I have to check that the 16 goes into this 162 evenly or not by your calculator. So 162 divided by 16. It does not go into it. So therefore, this is not a good number, a perfect full power to use. So next will be 3 to the fourth power. 3 to the fourth power is 81. And we know that 81 times 2 is 162. So therefore, I can basically rewrite this as fourth root of 81 times 2, that's 162, times with n to the 7 power. Simplifying it using the product property, 
thinking about each factor. Fourth root of 81 is 3. So inside the fourth root, right away, I'm going to write it down. 2, because 2 is not simplifiable. Now we are left with the variable. Variable, the exponents of the variable, divided by the index. 4 goes into 7 only one time. So the outside will be n. And since the remainder is 3, inside the radical will be n to the third power. So notice that at this point, I start using everything mental met. Okay? And you may also write it down, okay, these steps uh, as you wish. Okay? If you need to see uh, visualizing. Otherwise, I will say that start practicing mental math. So next one, cube root of 56, x to the fifth power, y to the fourth power. So now I have to think about does 56 has a perfect cube number or not. So 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the third power is 8. Now, 56 is basically what? 8 times 7, so it's perfectly okay. Right? We Now we find out what is a perfect cube number of this uh, factor of this 56. That will be 8 times 7 is 56 times x to the fifth power, y to the times y to the fourth power. So now, using the product property to simplify this, thinking about each factor inside the radical, cube root of 8, that is 2. And right away, we know that 7 cannot simplify, so write it inside the radical. Now, the variable x. The exponent of the variable x is 5, so three divide, uh, 5 divided by 3, so 3 goes into 5 one time. So x to the first power come outside of the radical. And the remainder is 2, so therefore x to the second power stay inside. Variable y, y to the fourth power. So 4 divided by 3, so 3 goes into 4 only one time. So that will be y to the 1 power come outside of the radical. And since the remainder is 1, so y to the 1 power stay inside. So these 1, you don't really need to write it down. Okay. So this will be my final answer. Now, 4 root of 32. And we know that 16 times 2 is 32, and then 16 is a fourth, perfect fourth power number, right? Because 2 to the fourth power is 16. So now we have what? 16 times 2 times x to the fifth power times y to the eighth power. So using the product property, I'm going to simplify each factor with this fourth root. So fourth root of 16, we know that that will be 2. And right away, I will want to write it down. Inside the radical will be 2 left because you cannot simplify. Now the variable case. Variable x has exponent 5. So 5 divided by the index 4, that gives me x outside because 4 goes into 5 only one time and the remainder is 1 so x stay inside the radical y to the 8th power so the exponent of the variable y is 8 so 8 divided by 4 and 4 goes into 8 twice evenly so y to the second power come outside since the remainder is 0, there is no y inside the radical, and this will be my 
final answer. So next, we're going to be using the quotient rule to simplify these radical expressions. So let's recall the quotient rule. The quotient rule is n root of, uh, let me write it on top right here, n root of a divided by n root of b that is equal to n root of a over b. So we're going to try to use this property to simplify the following examples. So for this first example, and clearly we notice that 54 is not a perfect cube number, nor 25, uh, 250. So what we can do is first we can simplify 54 and 250. Okay. So 54 and 250, both of them is divisible by 2. So that gives me 27, when I reduce it, 27 over 125. Q root of it. Now, I can basically rewrite this as Q root of 27 over Q root of 125 using the property of quotient, right, quotient property, split it up, and we know that Q root of 27, that is 3, and Q root of 125 is 5, and I got my final answer. For the next one, first what I can do is I can simplify the fractions y to the 17 divided by y to the 5th, that gives me y to the 12th. Now, I simply use the shortcut to think about 4 goes into 12, right? The exponent of the variable divided by the index, which is 12 divided by 4. It goes into 3 times evenly. So therefore, y to the third power is outside the radical. Inside the radical, nothing left because the, ex, uh, the remainder is zero, so there's no variable left inside. Next, for this one, I cannot simplify the given expression, so the next step that I will do is use the quotient property to split it out. 108 c to the 10 power over q root of d to the 6 power. Now simplifying each case. On the numerator, q root of 108, I can rewrite with one of the perfect q number. So I know that 3 to the third power is, uh, 2 to the third power is 8. 108 divided by 8, it does not go into evenly, so 8 is not going to work. The next one will be 3 to the third power, which is 27. 108 divided by 27, that gives me 4. So I know that I'm going to have to use what? The perfect cube number 24. Uh, 27 times 4, that will be 108, times with c to the 10 power. In the denominator, we can simplify already on this step, right? So the exponent of the variable d divided by the index, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I got d to the second power nothing left inside the radical because the remainder is zero. Now, simplifying the numerator and then we are done with this problem. So Q root of 27 is 3. So right away, I will write it down inside the Q root. 4 cannot simplify. The variable C has exponent 10. So 10 divided by the 
the index 3. 3 goes into 10 3 times. So c to the third power comes up. And the remainder is 1, so therefore c to the first power stay inside. And this will be my final answer because I cannot simplify any further. So let's look at let's take a look at on the final three examples. So M I can reduce the fractions. So we're gonna reduce the fractions. So that way the number will be smaller and we can decide whether what should we do. Five goes into five one time and five goes into eighty. 16 time. a to the 8th power on the top and a to the 3rd power at the bottom. So when I simplify it, it will become a to the 5th power. b to the 6th power on the numerator and b to the 2nd power in the denominator. So b to the 4th power. So now we're going to simplify this splitting out because the denominator is a perfect full power but not the numerator so it's better off to split it out the radican uh, radicals into quotient format and then simplify each part so we know that on the numerator is only the variable so exponent of a is 5 so 4 goes into 5 only one time so a comes up inside the fourth root since the remainder is 1 so a stay inside <coughs> fourth root of b to the fourth power fourth root and fourth power they cancels out so b stay outside and none of the b will be left inside we know that 16 is a perfect fourth number, so fourth root of 16 is 2, and this will be my final answer because I cannot simplify any further. Sometimes we need to combine the radicals into one radical format so that we can simplify and continue. So for this example, Notice that in the denominator 2z, square root of 2z, you cannot simplify any further. So the way that you look at it is, if I rewrite it into one fraction under one radical, can I reduce the numerator and denominator? If you can, okay, if you can reduce it, then try to rewrite it that is the approach and that's how we determine so I know that 2 and then 98 can be reducible by 2 and then also z to the fifth and z can be reducible so therefore I'm gonna use the quotient property to rewrite it under one radical so it will be 98 z to the fifth power divided by 2z so before we simplify the radical we simplify inside first right so 2 goes into 98 49 times z to the fifth power and z when I simplify that will become z to the fourth power so now see that the number is a lot nicer and I can simplify square root of 49 is 7 and then square root of z to the fourth power, so exponent 4 divided by the index 2, four goes, two, four, 2 goes into 4 twice evenly, so z to the second power comes out, and nothing stay inside, so this will be my final answer. So next, similar situations. In the denominator, fourth root of 2n to the third power cannot simplify by itself. So because of the numerator radical is, all, radical is also the index 4, we can use the quotient property. So using the quotient property, 
two V right it under one radical, 324, N to the seventh power, 2N to the third power. 2 goes into 324, 116 times. Oh, 162, I mean. And n to the seventh power reduced to n to the third will be n to the fourth. Now, we need to look at this 164, uh, 162 for a perfect fourth power number. We know that 2 to the 4th power is 16, and 162 divided by 16 is not a, not going, that's not going to evenly, so 16 is not, not a good number to use. 3 to the 4th power is 81, and I know that 81 times 2 is 160. Two. So I can rewrite this 162 as 81 times 2, which is 81 is a perfect fourth power number, times will n to the fourth. So fourth root of 81, that is 3, inside the fourth root. Two stay inside. Fourth root of n to the fourth power, so that will become n comes outside. Nothing stay inside. So this will be my final answer. So it will be 3 and fourth root of 2 is my final answer. And this concludes this section.